join audio computer audio connected recording pause that I want this i'll record it in case there's something valuable that comes out of it that we want to refresh ourselves with but um the idea is and this might be there's one more john if you show is great and maybe not um, but i'll get started so what i want to do is, is walk you through um discovering sales effectiveness and it's meant to be it can be used one of two ways it's meant to be in the context of today um a follow-on to a group that you've already taken discovery through so call it day one discovery for general communications. And what this would suggest is that it's a sales team, sales environment, or as Suzanne and I were talking at the start, it might be uh, a group of lawyers that don't think they sell, but that do business development. And the other further extreme would be a group of maybe leaders that want to influence other people. Mm -hmm. And so you simply have a mindset of we're learning how to better influence people versus sell to them because of the connotation that sales brings a lot. Um, so that's the one context, day two, you know, going deeper in sales. The other way that I've used it, and I'll show you how, is I've taken pieces of it and combined them with day one discovery where I'm working directly with a sales team and it's not meant to be a, a day one, day two presentation. It's a one-time event. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see when I do it that way is it's much more modeled after day one discovery but I've inserted certain slides off the deck I'll use today with you that seem to lean it more into a sales uh, effectiveness program, but all combined. So it's taking people that are just getting the profile and moving them through the sales process where today the suggestion is you've worked with groups, they've already been through discovery. And now we're gonna take, let's say a subset of salespeople and say, wanna go deeper and focus on clients with what we've learned already. So that's the context. I asked Tiffany to email each of you the PowerPoint slides. So you have the same deck I have. You don't need to pull it up. Um, also the facilitator guide and coach note, you should all have as well electronically. And then lastly, the um, there's a workbook that you can purchase. It's about 50 bucks, so it's pricey. But I've sent you a soft copy of the workbook so you understand the content that's in it. It's It's stamped all over, you know, don't sell, don't use sample copy, things like that. So it's, it's not uh, for printing, but it's definitely for a resource guide for all of you. Um, so if that sounds good, let me just pull it up. By the way, let me just back up for a second. How many of you have, have, have done some delivery work with the Discovering Sales Effectiveness deck? I have not used that deck, but I've created my own um, role plays for sales um, and inside sales um, in just a general class when I have some sales managers in class so that it's more relevant to them. Um, and then, so when you've done that, Heather, is that is that part of a the, the day one experience where they're just getting the profiles for the first time? Yes. Okay. And then Tracy, you, you talked about your history. You've got the chapters printed, but haven't used the slides yet. Right, yep. And Suzanne, you mentioned you yeah. used them two or three times. Yeah, I just went and unchanged sales effectiveness to business development, so they didn't have heart attacks. <laughs> that was lawyers, <laughs> you said. Yep, but it, was, it, it, it worked very well. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't get as much play, because quite honestly, when I've done sales training or sales teams, the tendency is that it's a day one discovery focused on sales. And so it's a blend of the day one we all know and pieces of this. Yeah. But I thought in, in providing you the context of what it looks like in the original intent of you've been through day one, let's take the salespeople deeper. That's that's the basis for this. Um, and, and so to, to position this for you, the original idea is you know day one dis day one discovery was communications and sometimes a bit of team, a bit of sales, a bit of leadership. And then there was the much higher end programs like Team Effectiveness Navigator or Transformational Leadership. And there was a unique sales proposition that's no longer offered because of, of uh, the creator and Insights parted ways about 12 years ago. But um, Insights felt like that was too big of a jump to go from day one discovery to some of that more intense, deeper stuff. So they said, let's create something that leverages the same profile potentially with additional chapters and anybody who's been through day one discovery accreditation can teach it. So the thought behind discovering sales effectiveness is you know enough to teach it as a client practitioner and 
it's new content that's fresh and that targets that audience. So you've already done day one. Now we're gonna take a sales team through it. You'll also notice some similar themes. Like in day one discovery, we start with who are you? In discovering sales effectiveness, we start with who are you as a salesperson? So you'll be able to go back and reference into the facilitator and coach notes. There's exercises along the lines of a lot of these, but this could be the same thing around alliterative adjective. What's a word that describes you as a salesperson? And, and begin to engage in that conversation, moving people to conscious awareness of self and thinking about who am I as a salesperson? How do I show up as a salesperson? And then it talks about um, a successful mix. Successful selling requires a mix, right? There's the capabilities, um, the skill set that you have, there's that positive mindset about, you know, I believe in myself and I'm going to go out and get some things done. And then the, the, the piece that this system or this um, program plays into is the behaviors. Taking the skills that you have, the right positive mindset, and then coupling it with using discovery to connect and adapt to customers and clients using the discovery model. So that third area of behaviors is really that sweet spot for where this discovery piece fits in. Uh, depending on how long it's been from that day one that you did, this could be a 10 second refresh if it was a week or two or three ago. If it's been three, four months, you might wanna go a little bit deeper, but you'll notice that it's, a, it's, it's not the traditional definition of the four colors that we all know. It actually is targeted towards salespeople. So salespeople may demonstrate red energy by being direct, decisive, focused, and proactive, and people with um, yellow energy, enthusiastic, imaginative, interactive, and flexible. It's still the same themes, however, around the way that the color energies show up in terms of our ability to connect and adapt to those colors, and then what's the risk of overusing them? So one of the exercises, again, and um, if you're not buying the workbook, there are some of the slides that can be adapted nicely to exercises or worksheets as well. So this is a good example of one. You might send this out in advance to a remote sales team and literally have them spend some time filling it out. And what they're doing is writing down behaviors that they would apply in their own sales approach. And what, I won't have you do it right now, but what it starts to demonstrate is people tend to gravitate towards their leading color energy, <laughs> right? right? So right away you're like, oh, the four colors, I'm so enthusiastic and I inspire others and I engage well, blah, blah, blah. And so I'd be, I'd fill up that whole yellow quadrant as fast as I could. Then I'd move likely to red energy, my second, you know, driven, focused, numbers oriented, task oriented, achiever, competitive, and blah, blah. And then I'd move to that sales approach about customer service and, and support and reaction and all those things, green energy. And then I might just sit there and say, using my blue energy, what do I do well? And it, and it, and it becomes real obvious to people, for me, speaking personally, not much. <laughs> I, I don't do I don't do the research. Um, I don't plan the structure and the the strategy behind my engagement. I don't have key milestones that I'm measuring, for instance. Mm -hmm. And it really again invites the dialogue, going from who are you as a salesperson to good day, bad day. What are you doing as a salesperson? Because we're still in that who am I, who are you, component of communication. So it's still. Who am I as a salesperson? I'm somebody that overuses yellow energy in my sales approach and might at times even overuse red. I could get better with earth green and wow, have I got an area of opportunity in my use of blue energy. Now that's different than me selling into blue energy because that takes it to a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. And this, this exercise helps people begin to realize I'm not as good as I'd like to think I am when I look at it across the spectrum of all four color energies. So you could have people relay this back, um, talking about where they wrote it and which quadrant. And there's a good engagement and conversation, as you can imagine. The suggestion, by the way, in this virtual environment, as well as back face to face, um, I'm taking an hour because we're not doing all these exercises. I might in, uh, suggest like even in a webinar format, two hours with a good break in the middle, 10, 15 minute stretch and, you know, walk around the house if that's the case still delivering it virtually. I wouldn't try and pack it into a, I don't think you can pack it into a one hour virtual. Um, just like um, if I do day one as a public class, we, we really do rush it in an hour. But if I have an intact team for day one, it's always gonna be two hours with that 10, 15 minute break in the middle. 
So now that people have gotten a sense of who they are as a salesperson, where they're demonstrating the color energies, we, we talk about <coughs> the gifts that come as a result. So leading with fiery red, here's, here's a number of your gifts. Leading with earth green, obviously, here's some things that you are going to have to stretch yourself to be able to deliver. And of course, there's that, this is that lead into saying, now, above and beyond who you are, if you're selling to red energy, this is what you're going to need to find a way to do. So there's what you do naturally. There's where you need to learn to stretch. And then, of course, there's are you aware of who you're doing it towards or for in terms of their color energy and for the benefit? Um, in the workbook, there's a nice exercise that you could walk people through as well, which is to say, jot down a couple notes about how you've used this energy in a sales approach. Jot down some notes about how you've used this sales energy or this color energy in your selling approach. And you'll, you'll see that right up in the facilitator and coach notes. And it's an interesting understanding because it's a, it brings together this notion of who am I as a salesperson? You know, what are my gifts? What are my possible weaknesses? And then what color energies do you bring as a prospect or a customer or a client? And what does that mean for my need to adapt my style or recognize that I can sort of be myself if I lead with yellow and I believe you do as well. So there's the four examples, the four um, color cases. And then just like good day, bad day colors, we talk about the risk of overusing our gift. But again, in a selling situation. And so we go through the examples of what this might mean to salespeople and I think these, these are really valuable slides. These are some of the slides that I would grab from day two, this sales event. If I was doing a sales training program, but I just had one day where we've, you know, gone through the profiles to understand it all, I would add these slides into it as an example. Because now it's just me on a bad day. No, it's me on a bad day as a bad salesperson overusing yeah. my leading colors. Mm -hmm. And part of it is, People who lead with these color energies in a selling environment don't recognize they're doing this. Just like we don't recognize when we overuse our gifts. Sunshine yellow, losing track of time, that's a classic. So many of us that lead with yellow energy don't respect the clock like people with blue and red energy would want us to. So that's valuable as well. Thinking about the finer details, the pre-call work, right? That sometimes yellow energy can skip and part of it's yellow energy coupled with intuition. We kind of know we can wing it. And because of that ability to use our charm and wing it after the fact, it's, it's sort of a doubling down on not preparing. But it's a good conversation. You could, you could invite the group that you're taking through this to say, is there one of you that leads to yellow energy that could help give us a story or an example of how you relate to, being, to, to having done this or maybe do this potentially when you're overusing that gift of your color energies? And again, it goes through all four. And you did, you did receive this, right? Did I ask before, did you get all the three decks and the samples? Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so there's that conversation about my gifts, my ability to lean into color energies, the, the risk of overusing the gifts that I bring, dialogue and conversation about who's done it, how have they done it, and then you move to the piece that's, that's in, in my opinion, maybe the most important as it relates to sales. Recognizing color energy preferences by observing people's behavior. And by observing people's behavior, I don't just mean physiology and tone and pace. I mean every written thing I've ever gotten from them, right down to their job title, right down to um, the interaction I may have had with them. Um, also the role that they play my experience of them in the past and looking at and analyzing things like literally every email that they've sent to me back and forth. It might include research that I would do if I was planning ahead to Google them and look up their social media sites and find out how active they are on things like Facebook. Yeah. Are they on it at all? If they're on LinkedIn, is there a photo? Is it a formal photo? Is it casual? Um, do I, if I find someone on Facebook and LinkedIn, do I see, two different sides of who they are. Like, oh, there's my Facebook fun and crazy side. That's totally separate from this corporate look and feel that I bring in terms of 
what's there, there's also the ability to find out where else they're present. So that research at the front end about just Googling somebody's name and Googling somebody's name in parentheses or, or quotations rather, and then Googling someone's name based on their geography, I, there's so much more you can find out. There's another local Minneapolis resource named Sam Richter. You might have heard of, great guy, leads with cool blue, blue red, and he's a keynote speaker. Doesn't seem like it might jive, but he, worked, he, was, the, um, he was a librarian for a dozen years at the James J. Hill Library. And what he learned how to do is be the best researcher. And leading with blue red and blue green, when the internet came out, he just took his skill set and transferred it to the internet. And he's got several books on how to do your pre-call homework to learn everything there is about somebody before you approach them. It's a, it's a, it's a brilliant way to think about, um, especially like yellow and red energies, how much more you could be doing at the front end. Uh, and I, um, if you, Go ahead. I've been asked to develop training for our sales teams, um, phone training. Um, they're always out on the road. They're used to meeting people face to face. And um, now all of a sudden they are being asked to call on customers, existing and new customers by phone. And um, recognizing the color energies by phone, um, are, are there some tips that you could recommend? how to identify somebody, I know by tone and by, um, um, let's say, pace and volume and all of those, is that what I should be looking at or? Well, it is, but let me, let me show you where we're going with okay. that. So, you know, here's the piece that, and it's not that we're losing this. Remember, you know, as I said to the folks on the day one, or even the train the trainer piece, we're, we're not losing face to face. I can watch, and I am, I'm looking right at your faces. I can see Tracy in that reflective pose and you know, and, and so in the smile and Suzanne smiles all the time, you know, and uh, I, I did a, a call this morning with about 20 some people on the on the um, on the weekly day one that we do. And one of the gals couldn't stop smiling. And at one point when I showed the wheel with the example dot being on 26. And I said, that's actually me. And she just bubbled up. Oh, I'm, we're so similar. I'm a 46. I'm right next to you. And I said, you, you are, but you're kinder. And I said, but, on, you know, you've stayed on video the whole time. Everyone's been able to see you smile through the whole thing, which is kind of that hallmark of that yellow, red, green, blue energy. So there's, there's body language clues that we can still pick up on if we're choosing to pay attention. And also there's this idea that in, in a sales environment, there's the call, but then there's the video call. And there's gonna be a massive transformation to video calls because we have to do it. We're, we're being forced to escalate what would have been a three to five year curve in three to five weeks. I've read a lot about it. It's, it's staggering the level of adoption that this new format is having um, and how comfortable we are getting, but, but because we're being forced to do it, we have no choice. If we don't do it, we're lonely. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and it's just that need to see and connect. So here's one of the slides, clues to body language. Um, but then there's also verbal style. And so Heather, to your point about what can you be teaching people is it's, 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 um, it's things like this. And, and it's the teaching really is awareness to look for this because now that you're looking at it in front of you, you're like, yeah, that makes sense. Faster pace, business-like for fiery red, inquiring, diplomatic, slower pace for earth green. There's also a lot of power, not just in recognizing it and I'm jumping ahead of myself, but in also being able to deliver it. So a lot of salespeople lead yellow, red, red, yellow. We know that the vast majority. Um, the ability to pull that back to deliver a soft, inquiring, diplomatic tone for earth green is really, really difficult. It, it just, it, right? Like I'm, I'm making myself do that and I only did it for three seconds. Super hard to do. And yet, if I, re yeah, I know it's Suzanne, what's it? Oh. Betsy, Betsy's in the office. She just told me that's the most soothing I've sounded. <laughs> but when how salespeople, much, go ahead. This um, is regional too. Uh, you know, I live in Virginia, but I'm originally from Oregon. And I notice when I go home, everybody's, it's just a slower pace of life. Um, 
and I'm sure you can pick this up, especially when you're on the phone, um, listening to tone and pace and, and that sort of thing. And then, you know, there's the geographical differences, but then within that, there's also the color energy preferences. So yeah. how, how do you mesh those two? So part of it is practice, right? Just the more people that you experience, because there's that, you know, that Southern drawl and Suzanne's still got a little bit of that coming from, I'm going to get it wrong again. This it's either Mississippi, Mississippi or Alabama. I think it's Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah. So yeah. Suzanne has that calm, slow Mississippi style. And you know what, like East Coast, fast talking New Yorkers. Why? I don't know. The question <laughs> is that there's more people who lead with red energy in New York or people in New York of all these four styles of color energies are just a little faster amped up version of it. Mm -hmm. But part of that is the conversation to be listening, right? And listening to examples. And what's great is to be able to pull up examples and even video clips and then let people get, just like you would do watch my back and say, what color energies are you hearing? Mm -hmm. And if not clipped, although that's the easiest way to know you've got it captured really well, because we all put our own bias into our examples. Like when I give examples of voicemail, I have a bias towards yellow red, even though I don't try to. But um, so there is a geographic component to it and the color energies I think can be the way in which you navigate through that as well. So we had um, body language, one example. And again, video call face to face, you're still seeing that. Verbal style, even just on the phone, you're still hearing that. Then there's also the type of interaction and this can be moved across different platforms face-to-face, -face, where are you on the video call? What am I seeing based on our interaction? But even the interaction on the phone, right? I can hear these things if I'm listening for it. And even if I'm just getting an email from you, I'm gonna see the difference in an email that's formal, indirect, controlled, and reserved versus friendly, flexible, informal, and engaging. So the point of this slide is in all of the different ways in which we engage, somebody who's paying attention can pick up the clues. And the message behind all these, and again, this one's not so easy to see, although quite honestly, with video calls in a home environment, some of us can see a lot more of it because of what you see behind people. Yeah. And people That's are why my camera's not on. <laughs> oh, come on, Heather, now you got us curious. Oh, oh no, we've started many, uh, in the, we're in the process of cleaning out closets. Well, Which you know, Zoom's evolved. got the background. <laughs> You, you can put up the fake background as well. I know I need to do that. Yeah. And actually, that's not a bad idea. Suzanne, you told me, right? Do you, or it was John actually uses the green screen behind him. No, I, yeah, I told him he could, that the green is one of the best choices as long as you don't wear green. Correct. Mm. Um, that's what they say, because then if you have to show a document, like if you're doing a screen share like you are, where you're showing us the document, that that um, helps I don't know, that's a little Zoom thing I watched that said to do that. Hmm. Yeah, and it's not, I mean, it's not necessarily a bad deal. The other thing you could do is to brand yourself. Like I was suggesting, like you brand, you know, insights to, or uh, discover yourself. And so when you are doing a sales call, you they see that somewhere in the background instead of your um, office. True. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. And yeah, I like that one too. Yeah. <laughs> you can also, you can like, uh, let me go back to here. You could also be here, look right at the camera with just a little bit of a nice smile and then snap a screenshot, then cut and paste it, upload it to zoom and then put it there. If you want to hide and do dishes and pretend you're sitting in front of the screen. <laughs> you're so bad. Oh my gosh. I did it to Kenzie, uh, yesterday. <laughs> You're so bad. All I'm saying is there's just, and, and by the way, it's only going to get better. It's, there's only going to be more and more and more possibilities and opportunities. Yeah. Yeah. I feel every one of us on the teaching side has to really practice this. And by the way, the, the practice is family calls. Yeah. Don't have a Zoom call with your family without saying, hey, everybody, can I show you something? And practice it. I mean, show them a news clip. It doesn't matter what you show them. But begin to get really, really, the, yeah. be the most familiar with sliding in and around all the tools. Because just like there's a point where you don't know you're holding the phone in your hand when you're talking, there's got to be a point where you don't know you're navigating throughout Zoom while you're teaching and delivering. Right. Yeah. So there's work environment, 
And then the last piece is the integration of all of it. So what we're saying is don't just trust one source, but look for patterns across all these things. What do I see in their body language? What do I hear in the verbal style? What do I read in the emails or hear on the phone? And then if I have access to their work environment, and, and I would even add to this, their job title, the role that they play, their geography as well, mm -hmm. looking at all those different factors, what am I gonna lean into? And then as you lean into it, you continue to sort of reiterate, oh, I, I see a lot more yellow here and a little green, not much red, not much blue. I'm gonna lean into yellow energy, crack a couple jokes, you know, engage in that way, and then watch how they react to it. If they react in a positive way, I'm probably on track in my sales approach. If I crack up a little bit and they don't, I gotta, I gotta step back and rethink what I'm investigating in them. So it's all about not relying on just one source. And as a result, whoops, as a result here, I would say to the, to the salespeople, um, I want you to identify like one prospect that you want to sell to and one existing client that you sell to all the time, maybe even your most valuable client. And I want you to think about all these different areas of how they show up. And to the best of your ability, jot down some of the key things that you're noticing. And as a result of what you're noticing, what are their top two color energies? And you can give people time to do it. You can have people get on um, the microphones and report back out. If you've got a sales team where multiple people interact with the same client, you can invite them to collaborate together and say, is there a, just like we do in a live workshop, I would say, is there a client that several of us work with right now? And it could be inside sales, outside sales, customer support. They all know Bob Smith. Share with each other what your perceptions are of Bob Smith, why you believe that to be true, and then see if you can't come to agreement on Bob Smith's top two color energies. Think about what you've been doing and what your new approach should be with that new knowledge in place. That's a real tangible way to help people figure it out. Another very tangible way that I like to add to that is by voicemail. And I would use the people's existing voicemail in the room, or in this case, remote, and say, are any of you comfortable dialing your voicemail and letting us listen to it? We wanna tell you what color energies we're hearing, but we wanna tell you why. See ya. I'm being, I'm being held up. <laughs> and you start to make it very, very tangible. You could even say to people, if they want, take a few minutes and, and leave a better voicemail if they've got one that's too far skewed to one of the four directions. What's interesting about it, and it all goes back to awareness, if you're consciously aware, you can leave a good, email, a good voicemail message that touches all four colors. If you're unaware, your voicemail, I bet you a million dollars, directly reflects your less conscious graph. Because that's how you left it. Every email you've been sending reflects your less conscious graph, because that's what we do. With awareness, we can change it all. Let me just check in for a minute if you've got any thoughts or comments on what we've hit on so far. Can you oh, give us some examples or an example of a voicemail if I wanna use that? Of the of good versus skewed? Yeah. Whoops. So what I typically do is I, I come up with my version of the, what, what I might call skewed examples. And, and actually it's mine. <coughs> so um, do, what, do as I say, not as I do. My voicemail is something like, uh, this is Scott, sorry, I missed your call. Leave me a message and I'll get back in touch with you. <laughs> little bit of inflection, little bit of that yellow, trying to make that connection um, versus fiery red. This is Scott, leave a message, right? I mean, both get the job done, but they, Either one really conveys yellow versus red. Earth green would be that calm, caring, connected side of people that we hear and that we pick up on. And, and cool blue is, of course, um, give me all the data. Answer this, answer this, answer this, answer this. People with cool blue, almost in desperation, are asking for all this information. Um, so that, that'd be the breadth of all four. The one that would work, um, and again, I, I wish I had it recorded because I won't... It, I, I never touch on green quite well enough, but I would do something like, this is Scott, sorry that I missed your call. Leave me your name and number and I will get back in touch with you soon. Like not too long, not too short, not too much emotion, 
not zero emotion. You could warm Perfect. it up. You could warm it up on the part where you said, sorry, I missed your call. Hey, sorry, I missed your call like that. That would be a little bit more green, Scott. Well, and you right do here. that better. You do that better than I do. <laughs> Heather, let me, let me hear your test drive on the, uh, on that oh. generic four color message. I would struggle with green as well. Um, I would say for me, um, hi, let's see. Um, hi, this is the voicemail of Heather Mason. Uh, you, I've missed your call. No, that's all right. Um, hey, Heather, this is fun because I'm, I'm hearing earth green, but remind me your wheel position. Uh, more blue. Yeah, blue. But, yeah, but it yeah. Come, there's something that comes across to me in, in tone and pace that, that could easily be misconstrued. Hey, do you lead with blue green? Uh, no, uh, blue, red. blue, blue, red, I think. Yeah. 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 Cause you do have kind of a soft, calm tone. Like, look yeah. at Suzanne. Yeah, she picks up on it. That's, I've been told that. Yep. Yep. Hi. Let's see. What is it? Hi. You've reached the voicemail of Heather Mason. I'm not able to receive your call right now, but please leave your name, number and a brief message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. See that to me, I hear green, blue. Really? Okay. I, do, I don't hear yellow. And, and part of the triggers for me, like, the, and, and this is, by the way, this is sales training, because this is what we're learning to listen for when we call other people. Yep. Is you said you've reached the voicemail of Heather Mason. Mm -hmm. It's just an added detail. Yeah. But if it's not you alive, I know it's you. I mean, I know it's your voicemail, <laughs> rather. So that's a, that's a detail piece that, that, that I think largely cool blue would add. Yeah. The, other, the other thing that I try to do on mine to add that blue energy, because that's who my clients are, is I will say, um, I'll get back to you by the end of the work day. And then that means, you know, whenever they think the end of the work day is. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little bit more specific about within 24 hours or something like that. And I've heard the example, I'll like get back that. to you within 24 hours. But to me, yeah. that seems like a long time. Right. But... I don't know. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Oh, these are all um, very interesting. And I, I think that this would definitely spur a great conversation um, with our salespeople. Well, and what makes it so tangible is when they can be the example. Like, And again, I've done it face to face, but you could do it here. And I'm inviting you to do it if you want, right? Is to give us your example and then let the rest of the team give feedback. The thing that's changed for me in these remote workshops is the uh, collective video didn't mm -hmm. really exist until about a year ago. I mean, I know Zoom was out there and GoToMeeting was trying to add it and it was clunky and it was confusing and it never quite worked like it should. But now it's, you know, to see slides and see 10, 12, 14, 18 faces that are able to communicate and then get feedback from each other, it's almost as good as being there. And we, in our job, in our, our training mode, facilitation mode, is make it as good or better than being there. I have a question. Can I ask a question? Oh, sure. Am I on mute? Oh, no. Um, do we still have this where they have this on one side, but on the other side, it tells like if you're a fiery red, I gave this out at my sales when I did this a few years ago and I had one left over, but it was strategies for the colorful salesperson. So if you lead with fiery energy, then it tells you what to do when you're dealing with these customers that have it was really helpful. Do we Boy, have I haven't seen that in many, many years. What's the little coded number on the bottom? Let me, I'll double check for you. Um, JA201. Yeah, the one that we most commonly use. Yeah. But I don't know. People liked it because it was um, really specific to them. But oh, it totally. Me, it made me think of what, um, what, I forgot her name already. Heather was saying about when people want specifics about like, what should I do with my voice or whatever, then it kind of tells them how to That's not the one that is, each card is unique to the color energy, right? So there's four different versions of that. That's just the one version. Right. There's, there are four different versions of it. So uh, on the front, it was the same. It was that one thing we always give out. Yeah. But on the back, it was specific for sales to each color energy. So I yeah. ordered as many as I, the people, you know, who were participating in the Correct. workshop. And then I had this one left over. 
And I just knew that there was a lot of problems with that because people didn't realize that each one was customized for the color energy of the person that you gave it to. And so they would get mixed up. I know it's right. Well, you and I see it, but here's the other one. Let me, uh, I don't know. It was really. I'm going to start my video. We've got teenagers all over our house, so I've taken over the, the dining room right now. Um, well, yeah. We're all trying to have video conferences in different parts of the house. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if you heard me say I'm in the office because if my daughter sings at home with her classes, there he is. Don't feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go change a diaper and spread it on loud. <laughs> I'm telling you. It's a whole new world because this oh, wow. is, this has become okay, and it's never going it, to it's not going to go back to being not okay. That's how I view it. But I was going to show you this. Let me see if it pops up here. So this is Job Aid 204, and it's similar. It's got this almost the same front, right? Yep. But this has all the the yeah the, I have the, that one the detail. But that doesn't. We, but that's not about sales, is it? That's just the general. Well, not particularly, but if you know you're going to be selling to, let's say, Fiery Red, it's telling you what they appear like, what their work preferences right. are like. Yeah, I style, focus, fears. Yeah, it can yeah. be it can be adapted to that. Yeah, and I I always purchased that card when I did my day one with them. But when you want to come back, you know, two months from now, and then they hire you to do sales, they want like a new toy. Yeah. Well, and I, I want to go back and see if they still offer that because I remember. I didn't get um, any complaints about it. I thought people were really, they liked it a lot. Well, you knew to give it out to the right people based on their unique color energy. Yeah. But if you if you don't realize that, and you let's say you buy each one with, that's fiery red, not knowing it, and then you give it to everybody in the room, oh, it's 75% okay. wrong. That was the screw-ups that people were doing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. The yeah. other one that can be really powerful, but it's more pricey, is the, the reference guides. That's one we get, yep. Yeah, that's got so much in it. And, and you can see the sections underneath it. There's, there's the color energies. Then there's the, and it used to be tabs. The old version was tabs. But across here, it's got which category it is. So it goes from color energies to colorful communication. And there's a lot on that, which is brilliant for sales. The, here's all the clues mm -hmm. for recognizing type and others. And it also does a nice little spin, which you'll, you'll see the slide deck here does as well, from the four types to the eight. This is probably the best resource. I think it's a little overpriced, but not as crazy as the workbooks by any means. I think it's about 16 or 18 bucks, but. Heather, do you get this one? That doesn't exist because, anymore. Because, no, this is, that's this thing. Is that that, one? No, but that's become this. Oh, because this one has things about how they sound. She no, was it, it's the same content inside. Oh. Okay. This looks different. It's because it used to be really hard laminated plastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you could spill a cup of coffee on it and wipe it off. This one is cardstock. You spill oh. coffee on here, it stays here forever. It's a cheaper version. I hate to say it. Oh. I guess I I just have the old one. Don't give it away, Suzanne, because that's a collector's item. <laughs> <laughs> and it's by the way, and it'll last forever. I, I've, I've been with people who've spilled coffee on this card cardstock version. But what it does near the back, it talks about how the color energies are motivated. That's all sales. And then managing, that's a little bit different, how to manage the color energies. So that's the, these are the two that we use. The folks either use most RCPs all by this with the blocks, with the profiles. And sometimes we'll use this one which is a subset, you, you know, you lose a lot with this, but you've got to have some overview of the colors. So the reason I wanted to kind of stop and pause there for a minute is everything up until now has really been discovery applied towards the color energies to interact with other people. This is where there's a, both a benefit and a risk in using the selling chapter, because this is where the selling chapter introduces a model of selling. And they call it the insights model of selling, but this model has been around for 300 years. And so while it talks about the six steps to a sale, the size of the font and the size of the oval speaks to the amount of time you should spend there. 
So we're saying, you know, if you're going to sell before you even begin selling, there's a bunch of stuff you need to do. And then the first thing you're supposed to do before you pull out all your wares and pitch whatever you have is ask a million, billion, brilliant questions to, you know, again, traditional model of selling. The more I know about your issues and your problems, the more I figure out what a, a good solution would be. As I propose the solution, I'm, I'm going to have little resistance, right? Buying resistance because I've done a good job of all that stuff at the front end. And you can see the first three steps are bigger than anything else. And what they're meant to say is that steps four and five, if steps one, two, and three are done well, four and five are a little tiny, not that difficult. And then the last one is the more follow-up, the more references you can get, the brilliant customer support and so forth is the way to go. Now, if a company doesn't have a sales process, this is a pretty good one. If a company has a sales process that can be mapped to this one, let's say they have four steps or 10 steps, but you can map them to this one, then you can do that and show people the connection if a company has a sales process that doesn't comfortably map to this, I, I would not introduce it because it can create a conflict. Well, wait, are we supposed to sell it the way we have been or the way you're teaching me right now? And if you can't show how it's connected or mapped to each other, that could create a problem because all the next sections in here are before the sale begins and you think about the color energy of your client or your prospect, these are, um, these are what to do based on the customer's color energy for each of those six steps. So when you have identified a client that leads with green, blue, you come here and say, oh, great. Well, look, okay, so look at the things I'm going to do before the sale begins for green and maybe blue energy. And then when I identify needs, here's how I'm going to do it for each of the four color energies. So it is powerful and it is valuable. You just have to be cautious of the risk that you're interjecting a new sales process where somebody says, wait a minute, our step one is identify customer needs. Um, help me reconcile this slide with this slide with our one step. And it can be done and we've done it. I've done it for some pharma companies that have a, a published process and we map it to what they do. It's not that difficult, but sometimes if, it, if the mapping doesn't seem really clear and obvious, it, it could create a conflict. So you just want to be aware of that risk. And again, if they have nothing, this is brilliant because it's a process and how to treat each color energy along the way. And this doesn't exist in one of the job aids. Uh, it does exist in the uh, workbook. How many of you have seen this before? I'm just curious. I have, yeah. But it doesn't get a lot of use. I mean, if you look at Insights overall business, I would say 85, 90% day one discovery. Mm -hmm. And all these other deeper dive programs are such a smaller part of it, but yet potentially provide some pretty high value. So there's the gaining com commitment piece and then how would you follow through? So look at this, this last step as an example and apply it to your own color energy. Most people look at it and, and sort of say to themselves, yep, yep, that's really what I would like to wrap it all up based on who I am, based on how I demonstrate the color energies, which is exactly what it does. So through this process, you can have people go back to the start of it and say, take one of those two names that you came up with before, that you've identified a leading color energy and walk yourself through before the sale begins with that color energy, with that person, what have you done well? What should you do more of? What have you done well? What should you do more of? Literally for every one of these. You can see how it, it, it completely maps out the path of the sale. And I, I don't remember if it was you, Heather. Um, if they're on the phone, so much mm -hmm. of this still directly applies. Yep. And it's not that people can't identify color energies on the phone or on a video call. It's that they forget to do it. It's what everybody does. They forget to do it. That's why things like the CRM example I have in here, which is a real customer. Um, and my sales manager did this 20 years ago or 13 years, 17 years ago. In our CRM, we put a mandatory field and it was a drop down menu of the four colors. And you couldn't add a new prospect or customer to the CRM unless you picked one of the four colors. 
And, it, and it's just that little hint about thinking about what did you notice? Oh, that's right. Let me, let me put this in the drop down. So a lot of good learning comes out of it. The best part of the sales program is the practicing on real life examples, the dialogue about real life customers, clients, and prospects, and then the recognition of what have I done well in my process and what do I need to do better? And just like the wrap up in the day one discovery is the four blocks, these really represent the same things. Understand you, your unique selling style, understand value, um, and recognize differences in clients, prospects, customers, adapt and connect, um, leaning into their unique styles, and then practice, practice, practice. This is an interesting piece where it doesn't exist in day one, but it, it, it goes into a breakdown of all eight types. So if you think about it as taking a group that wants to be a little bit more advanced in their selling techniques, and no surprise, the names are associated with the eight types. But if you're able to identify a director, and again, we know this, and part of it is in the teaching, but to share with somebody how to move from identifying, oh, leads with red, to is a reformer, a director, or a motivator, mm -hmm. is a function of understanding the top and the bottom color energy. So if someone leads with red and the least you see is earth green, they fall into director. So you start to see how with a, with deeper, like once you get good at the four colors, for instance, to take your knowledge deeper to say, I don't think I've just got fiery red here. I think I've got a director. I've got highest red, lowest green. This is how I'm going to show up. And in terms of my ability to influence or sell, this is, this is how directors like to make their decisions. There's subtle but important differences moving to motivator. Outgoing and enthusiastic, dynamic and creative, full of ideas, innovation, and intuition. Because now you're moving from fiery red extroverted uh, thinking to extroverted intuition. And you don't have to get into the Jungian psychology, the descriptors to compare, oh, is somebody more fast paced and action oriented and prefers to be in control? Or are they outgoing and enthusiastic, dynamic and creative, full of ideas? That should be enough to make that subtle distinction between director and motivator. Here's the, here's the interaction you're having with them. And if you want to influence them, what do they care about in making decisions? Future potential and flexibility is very different than practical application and increasing efficiency. And this walks literally right around the wheel with all eight types. You could ask an existing sales team to try and come up with, again, real life example, are you selling to an inspirer? And people can also go back and confirm the, the reality of these by saying, if you're an inspirer, does this work for you? Does this relate to you? Are there parts of it that don't? And is there anything that you might add? And you work them all the way around the wheel. Now, you may not have to introduce this eight type concept right away if you've got modules. If you're working with a remote team and you've only got an hour and a half or two, yeah. um, you might just take them up to this point and say, go forth and sell in full color, right? And then bring it back and say, who's had success? What's worked? What hasn't? Mm. Let me take you one layer deeper. Let's show you how to differentiate, not just the four types, but the four blends that come from the resulting eight types. And all they've done is designate the names as the alliterative uh, name of the eight type. Chris, the coordinator, Oliver, the observer, but if you've got salespeople that can make a level of distinction about a prospect to put them in one of these buckets, you see how dramatically different their approach needs to be. And there isn't anybody that's, that's so good at this that they can't get better with an understanding. Here's our reformers. And you see the similarity of a reformer to a director because they're right next to each other, but you also see the differences. Single-minded, I totally agree with that. And it's the subtle difference moving closer to blue energy and wanting proof and seeing evidence of validity in their decision making. This is just an interesting uh, quote from the guy who wrote Spin Selling, which those of us that have come up through the sales ranks, that was a, a sales Bible for us 25, 30 years ago. Situation, problem, implication, need. It was basically the, the Xerox selling model. 
my wife, Linda, came out of the Xerox sales environment. That was her background. In fact, she's, she's been out of there for 20 years and she still uses that technique on me. She uses it on our kids. What's going on? Well, what about, hey, right? We, before we know it, we're, we're into implication before we realize we're being sold to. But the, the, the theme behind it is, instead of thinking that, that you're selling to someone, you're, you're helping somebody answer the problems or solve the problems that they have by being brilliant and ask them all, asking them all the right questions but it only works if you do it in their unique style. And if you do it well, you're not a sales rep taking up their time. You're a consultant who helped them arrive at the best possible answer to identify if what you're offering is really what they need or not. And they would pay you for that consulting engagement. That's when you've done it right. And that's such a rare skill with salespeople because salespeople, let me speak for myself because I was the worst. Salespeople go right to here all the time. And it's because we have to sell what we have. And so we start with our approach of, let me tell you about insights discovery and blah, 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 instead of backing up here and doing all the research and doing all the planning and asking all the right questions so that we know if this is even supposed to happen or not. Great process. Uh, let me get back. What do you think of this content so far? Great. It is very good. And then this references back to the profile because while you're going through, I should have mentioned in the steps, well, I guess I did mention it, but you can, you can directly reference this piece back to the selling chapter right here. So this is customized within each person's individual profile all the way through the process, how they would do these things. So that's something that you can do in parallel with referencing the, the profile. And then there's another piece that I like. And I asked Tiffany also to email you the, the blank worksheet. It should have been four documents you received. Yeah. Sorry, not three. The fourth one yeah. was a blank worksheet, which is this. And I don't have a printed copy of it. But there's one page in here called Sales Preference Indicators. What I like to always have groups do, and you've got the blank version of it, it's two-sided, is you can email that out to all your remote salespeople, ask them to print it, and ask them to fill it out, where they are ranking themselves on a scale of zero to 10. How good are they at direct handling of objections? Zero is terrible, 10 is brilliant. And just fill the whole thing out and then set it aside. The reason I have people set it aside is when we're in the profiles going through the selling chapter, we pull it back out. and and it's, uh, it's given to them. But instead of just the four colors, if you have it now, you can take a look at yours and you're gonna see the colors represent all eight types. So which color energy would I use to, for direct handling of objectives? Fiery red. Mm -hmm. Clarifying details, well, that'd be me acting as the reformer. That's the purple color that you see. Meeting concerns, well, me as a salesperson, meeting your concerns is gonna be using my earth green energy. So as you go through the whole page, it's not just the four colors, it's all eight. Mm -hmm. But what's really powerful is if somebody gives themselves a nine on persuasion and then their profile shows three because they have, let's say, low yellow energy, there's the realization they're not as good as they thought they were. That works the other way as well. Somebody rates themselves a three, the profile comes back and shows them nine They've got now new awareness of gifts that they probably have been bringing, but haven't been articulating or accentuating, and now they will. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a, a uh, I forget the expression. Drawing a blank. Ever so much more so. That's it. That's a Southern expression. <laughs> Ever so much more so. When you see that you're better at it than you thought you were, you get better at it as a result of knowing that. Yeah. One of the Go things when I had to, when I would um, do this, um, so this workshop for people who are required to attend because they're responsible for business development, for growing their book, and they don't want to, and they think of themselves as, I suck at every aspect of this. I don't want to be here. The very first thing I would have them do was to look at this page and say, look at, look how many great things you're good at. And they would be like, oh, I, I'm actually good at, 
a lot of things in here. And yeah. that would get them in a place to actually be ready to learn something because otherwise they come in so resistant, like your accountants and you have to grow their business and my attorneys and um, those kind of service providers that don't have a sales team. They have to do it themselves. And so this has worked really well. Suzanne, you know this. The rest of you don't know. Suzanne's also a professional actor. And the people who are the worst at this are actors, lawyers, and accountants, maybe even doctors. They yeah. think selling is the most evil, dirty, awful thing. Quick story, when I was uh, uh, 21, uh, getting out of school, I got a job selling computers. And I told my father that I, I was going to be a salesman. And my dad's an attorney, was an attorney. And he said, you know, is, is, there really isn't any kind of code of ethics for that job, is there? I go, <laughs> nope. And he says, you know, because we, we have, as attorneys, we have one. You know, and that kind of guides our ethics. And what I realized is my dad thought all sales guys were crooks yeah. because of the people that he had had to deal with that were selling to him. So he thought I was going into a sleazy profession. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I was so excited. I mean, I was the guy hooked on all the motivational tapes and, and wanted to take control of my future. And I'd never once thought of it in his frame of reference. But I think that's true of a lot of professionals and entertainers. Mm -hmm. So something to think about. There are people who take all this content, like Suzanne said, and change the word sales to influence. Mm -hmm. And it still works just as well. It's yeah. just a lot of editing on your part. Yeah. Do, do you have any advice for the opposite? Um, people who think they know everything? I've been doing <laughs> sales for 30 years. What can you possibly tell me? I'm great at my job. I've got a, a big ego. I you know, those, those folks. Well, two things. And I stole this from a friend of mine who used to own a Sandler sales training franchise. He got hired to train a group of uh, like, I don't know, equity brokers, guys that were all making over a million dollars a year. And he was making like a hundred. And, uh, and he was really intimidated. He's like, what, how can I teach guys making 10 times my income to be better? And he, like, he flipped a switch in his head and he sat down and he said, I W2'd $109,000 last year or whatever the real number was. And he goes, I know some of you make a million. I know there's a couple of you in the room who make $2 million a year. And he goes, let me tell you one thing. I don't make what you make, but if you listen to me, I can help you make a lot more. I can help you be that much better than you are. And it was getting over this intimidation factor a little bit to say to himself, I know a lot of good things. And if you use them, even if you're number one, you'll increase your sales performance. And if you're number two, this is how you get to number one. Part of it is your confidence in this content that no matter how much money or how much success or level of sales success a person has, everybody can get better. I'll tell you one more story like that. I don't think you'll have to deal with it like I did. And this was, this was wholesalers, financial guys all making 500 to a million bucks a year. And I was presenting to a group of 40 of them down in Naples in the four seasons. And right before I got up to start for a two hour workshop, a guy in the very front, in front of everyone in the room said, hey buddy, do us a favor, don't shit the bed. Loud enough so that everybody could hear it. <laughs> that was about 10 years ago. And it, these guys are, I mean, a level of arrogance and a level of success that they've had. So in front of the whole group, and again, I'd done this for 10 years already. I said, to, so the whole group could hear. I said, hey, great. I said. When I'm done, I'm going to ask you one question. Was I great or did I suck? And I go, those are your only two choices. And the guy said, game on. So I did the workshop, two hours, and in front of the whole group, I said, well, did I suck or was it great? And the guy goes, you were great. And he kind of said it quietly. And I go, sorry, mm -hmm. what? Just put him on the spot, right? And so there's people that come at it with that approach. I am so good. I don't need any of this stuff. And by the way, there's some of those guys you won't reach. But I think the majority of people through things like the discovery model, ease of implementation, and then the depth of things like, like Suzanne said, well, she shows people what they're great at. That's nice too. But they also notice what they're not so great at. Mm. Potentially, again, because we don't measure the competencies, but there's high value in sharing. That. And I'd be happy, uh, Heather, to look at what you're working on or give you some ideas about which components of this content to pull together if you want. Okay. Yeah, for me, it's, it's mostly just uh, the transition from 
face-to-face -face sales to phone sales and um, they don't like they don't like it they don't want to call they don't want to do cold calling they think that it's inside sales job and, and that's not their job it's they're they're supposed to be prospecting and and it's um, they're very very good at the face-to-face -face. it's just the um, it's it's the change I think and how do we how do I do what I'm so good at by phone when I'm uh, I don't know that that's that seems to be the big the big challenge because mm -hmm. they can't make that human interaction a lot of them lead with yellow yep. um, color energy and then we also have a lot that lead with blue um, we have a lot of people who are sales engineers and work with engineers and sell to engineers and so they they tend to do very well in that in that wheelhouse yeah there used to be a comfort level of hiding behind the phone call and now with video and it, it, it's it i tell you what every single day it, it it advances six months yeah just the fact that four or five of you are here luke's hiding with a baby but he doesn't even need to in this day and age I and mean, i could have my dog barking in the back it's just it's a new era of this face-to-face -face communications is the new normal and it's not going to go away i think um airline traffic is going to stay at half the level it was why would i fly all five of you together to be with me here when we can do a lot of work like this. They'll still be face to face, but I think the mix of our work was 95 5, 95 face to face, including what all of you, our CPs, did as well, and only 5% virtual. Yeah. I really believe in the next 18 to 24 months, it's going to be 50 50. That's great. It's going to save a lot of money, and um, I honestly was getting sick of all the travel, so this is, <laughs> this is I'm liking it. Well, I hit 200,000 last year. Linda hit 100,000. That was a record for both of us. Wow. And I mean, yes, I miss it, but uh, I don't know if it'll ever be quite that crazy. There's still big value in face-to-face, -face, great human interaction component. Oh, and yeah. we all have to get this figured out. I think that, the, Heather, a big part of your transition is going to be, can you get people to move from just the cold call phone call mm -hmm. to the Zoom call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Instead of having my first introduction to you be on the phone, can I get you to accept a Zoom call, regardless of your color energy, and have that be our starting point? Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You know, that's that's coming, but it's not there yet. I've I've never had a cold Zoom call, but I've had someone introduce me to someone else and then leave the call. Mm -hmm. But it's different to think about if I called one of you for the very first time and boom, we're both on camera talking to each other. You know, that's a that's a new ball game, but it's it a is. ball game that we have to be first um, to deploy because it's going to come. For sure. Yep. The, the last slide is just our G wave, that simple model about instead of saying what action will you take, we like to start with yellow energy and say visualize what perfection looks like for you. What's what's the future state that you can imagine uh, about the way you sell and then earth green who's going to engage who do you need to engage to support you. Why does this goal matter to you so much? And then what are the actions you're going to take to achieve that goal? It's a nice way to wrap it up with the color energies, tying it back to the actions that someone would take. And then that final piece about the journey. Very good. How are we doing? Whoops, I've run over. Sorry about that. And then there's your email at the, at the back end of it. You should all, well, you have this deck now. You've got the... Um, workbook for more information about it you've got the uh the blank worksheet which is great to email to people to say print it circle it set it aside and then bring it back during the presentation what else can i offer up that would be of support nothing so far this is this definitely has been very helpful and i i'm in the process of doing developing some um uh, web-based training on sales so just general like I was saying before the the telephone um, you know the sales process so I think it'll be easy to weave in um, the sales process it's very similar to, to what you have here and some of our sales people attended a workshop in Germany and they got the sales profile that that shows them um, where they're based upon what their profile is, where they're good and where their blind spots are. So some of them already have that. They just 
never there was no explanation of it yeah it didn't engage with it nope engaging is a big deal yep that's very good well as you know you should have my um mobile number even if you call the 800 number of our business you can roll right to my mobile i am available 24 7 because as we all know we all trainers always have a problem at nine o'clock the night before <laughs> so if you need nice. to reach out at nine o'clock the night before that's just mm -hmm. fine with me okay very good thank, thank you, you so much oh luke we got you back fantastic those kids were quiet and under control, or did you just uh, mute them the whole time? Uh, mute, yeah. There's, it's pretty rowdy. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Party. It's good, well, though. Well, if I can I, offer up any additional assistance, I'd love to do it. There, there's so much more that, that, that we are now charged with doing as training professionals in this new environment. we got to work with each other, support each other, and get good at it. Yeah. Thank okay. you very much. It's helpful. You got it. Thanks well, so much. Well, then I'll much. let you go. You all know my email, Scott at discoveryourself.com. Reach out anytime for anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Tracy. Bye. See you, Heather. See you Bye. later. Bye. Bye. Bye, Suzanne. Bye.